Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Those who have not received the palms yet, kindly collect the palms from the pastoral helpers. They are available at the back, at the entrance of the cathedral. Those who have not collected the palms yet, kindly collect the palms. The pastoral helpers are coming around. The procedure for today's celebration will be as follows. We will begin at the entrance of the cathedral. We will start with the service and as we enter towards the altar, the choir will sing the entrance hymn and then the mass will begin as usual. May I request all of you to rise and look backwards. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole world the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem to bed Fajr, and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a cloth tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? Reply, The master has need of it, and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a cloth tethered at a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the cloth? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the cloth to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the field. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The choir will now sing the entrance hymn, and as we proceed in procession, may I request all of you to raise your palms and pray. Thank you very much.
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously done that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my bed. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flame, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you wandered me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My, my God, my God, why have you wandered me? They divide my garments among them. And for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why are you behind me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance, he humbled himself becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Christ became obedient to the point of 
death, even death on a cross. The cross of this far greatly exalted me, and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, for that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release the Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, And what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus cursed, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated, place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, and he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garment by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right, one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that he may see, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, 
is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Let us all kneel down. Let us all rise. The veil of the century was torn in two from top to bottom when the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Today we celebrate the Palm Sunday. We are entering into the intense time of the Lent, what we call as the Holy Week, during which we meditate and we see the pain, the suffering, the agony Christ underwent. And Palm Sunday reminds us first that Christ died for you and me on the cross. Second, it reminds us that we can assure the salvation only through Christ. The third that we have to understand through the Palm Sunday, it is a message given to us loud and clear that Christ is the King. Today, let me place before you some of the symbols that we see in the readings which reminds us that Christ is truly the King. The first symbol is palms. The palms today are blessed. The people hold the palms. What is the significance of palms? Well, palms represents joy, victory, triumph and well-being. In the ancient days, palms were used when the king came victorious after defeating its enemy. And when he returned back into the kingdom, the entire kingdom would come out with branches, with their best clothes, and they would lay down on the ground. They would put the palms down on the ground, wave it high, to welcome the king for giving them the victory over the enemy. And this remarkable feat was done to a person none other than Jesus. The treatment that was given to the kings was now given to Jesus as he was entering into Jerusalem. And so we know that here, when the people laid down the palms and they waved, they cried out, Christ the King. They welcomed him as Christ the King. And this was an invitation for all of them to accept him as Christ the King. And this was the fulfillment of the Old Testament that the prophets foretold that the Messiah would come and people would welcome with branches. The second symbol that we see is the donkey. Jesus rode on a donkey. Now donkey symbolizes humility. Donkey in our day-to-day -day understanding we know always we put a lot of burden on a donkey. We put it on a donkey and we take the donkey here and there. The donkey does not revolt. The donkey does not react, but just carries whatever is placed on its back. Now here, it is symbolized 
that Jesus was humble. On his back was put the burden of sin and Jesus is carrying it and he is going to set us free from sin and death. In the olden days, what used to happen is the kings used to go on the horses. Now horses symbolizes speed and it symbolizes war. The best of horses were used during the war between two enemies or two kingdoms. Now when two kings came together face to face for war and if one king decides to make peace, there was certain tradition and customs that every king knew about it. If there were two kings standing opposite waiting to start the war and if one decides to lay down the weapon, then what he does is the king gets out of the horse and sits on a donkey and then he proceeds towards the enemy camp. Now when the enemy camp sees the king coming on a donkey, the enemy puts down the weapon and he does not attack the king because the enemy knows that according to the custom when the king comes on a donkey towards them that means there is a peaceful intention that means the king does not want bloodshed that means the king wants peace and he wants prosperity and every life is precious so when Jesus sat on a donkey and entered Jerusalem it was that he stood for peace he didn't come for violence he didn't come for bloodshed he came because according to the scriptures and the fulfillment he is the Prince of Peace and he's the one who can give us peace. Today we need to pray desperately for peace all over the world. Every place there is unrest, not only in the world, not only in the society, but also in our families and deep down within our heart. And it is only Christ that can give us the lasting peace. The third symbol that we see in today's scripture reading is Ozan. What is Ozan? Every time the king came victorious, people shouted, Hosanna. Hosanna means savior. Hosanna means save now. Hosanna means we thank you for protecting us, for saving our life. And this was reserved only for the royals and for the kings. And today that same slogan is used for Jesus. It was done knowingly or unknowingly. The scriptures tell us that it was the fulfillment which was there in the Old Testament, which was to be fulfilled only in the person of Jesus. And this is where we always sing Hosanna. Hosanna means save us now. And it is only through Christ that you and I can receive salvation. The fourth symbol that we see, that Jesus wept for Jerusalem. Why did he weep for Jerusalem? Jerusalem was supposed to welcome the Messiah. The Messiah was there, right there in front of them. They praised the Messiah. They acknowledged the Messiah. But unfortunately, Jesus foresaw that in three days things are going to be different. He has got a lot of fan following, but after three days everyone will unfollow him. Everyone will run away from him. There will be people who will betray him. And it's true enough, the moment he was brought before Pilate, the same people who cried Hosanna in the highest were the same people who said crucify him. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, in life, 
you and I have to learn a lesson. There will be people who will love us and there will be people who will hate us. This is part and parcel of life. There will be people who will praise you, who will raise you up. And don't be shocked and surprised if the same people will try to erase you, will put you down, will humiliate you and will do all kinds of character assassination and see your own downfall. And when these things happen in your life, think about Jesus. He went through this. And we as human beings, we go through this every now and then. You can imagine what Christ went through. Today, we have got counselors. When we go through this in our life, people have breakdown. People go and end up their life. People do not know how to handle this. They get a shock of their life. These things, be prepared. Do not always go for praises because that will not last for long. It does not need to change people's mind. That is why what we really need to know is our true value before God and before ourselves and the true value before God is this each and every one of us is a child of God today as we have gathered on the Palm Sunday let us invite Christ in every area of our life let us make him the Lord and master let us try to purify ourselves during this holy week and go and do a good confession and prepare not only externally but internally and let us be messengers of peace wherever we may be that we may continue to spread the message of Christ that God loves you and me. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seen in the right of the Father. From there we will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. My dear brothers and sisters, we have heard the passion of our Lord and we also remember the continued violence and sinfulness of our whole world. As Christ's final words were those of forgiveness, let us ask God to soften the hearts of women and men around the world. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Aldo, bishops, priests, deacons, religious and laity all over the world, that as Christ was honored on the day of his entry into Jerusalem, they may always be respected and appreciated as true servants of the Saviour. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are For all those who have the courage to stand up for justice and peace, that their efforts may never go unnoticed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are For the leaders of nations, that they may live up to the promises they made to their people before they came to power. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are For each one of us gathered at this Eucharistic celebration, that we may unite our sufferings with the sufferings of Christ for the redemption of humankind today. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For our lasting peace in those troubled places, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us silently put forth our personal prayers and intentions. God our Father, there is so much pain and suffering in our world that calls for remorse. Help us to do all we can to change that into joy of your kingdom by setting a mighty good example wherever we go. We make our prayer to Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once and for all, we may feel already the gift effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift your heart to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sins and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and His resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise You, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the new fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, to be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Aldo, our Bishop, and all the clergy and the laity. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. We remember to pray for the souls in purgatory, for the forgotten souls, for the souls who have no one to pray for, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostle, St. Arethas and companions, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, May merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, the glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all people. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, gracious to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant for peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let's offer each other the sign.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The Lenten Confessions will be on 25th, 26th and 27th of March from 5 to 8 p.m. Priests will be available for confession on these three days. All the Holy Week Pontifical Masses of Bishop Aldo will be live telecasted. The English Holy Hour will be on first Friday, April 5th from 4.45 p.m. to 5.45 p.m. The Adoration Chapel is under renovation. During this period, the third station of the plenary indulgence will be in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel, the Chapel of the Innocent Children. If anyone desires to support the cause for the renovation, you can do so at the parish office. We appreciate your great patience and wonderful generosity. The parish office will be closed during the Holy Week from 28th to 31st of March. All are kindly requested to gain the Jubilee plenary indulgence of St. Arvitas during this particular year. The halls and the classrooms during the Holy Week will not be available for any other activities except for Holy Week services. Let us stand for the prayer of St. Arvitas. O oh God, our Father, we praise and thank you for giving us St. Arvitas and companions. We ask you to bless us with the same faith and courage they had 1,500 years ago to proclaim your good news. Through the merits of their martyrdom, may all people see Jesus Christ in us, so that all may feel your love and come to know you as God. Protect and guide us, listen to our prayers, and send us the Holy Spirit, that be your church in the Arabian Peninsula. We always seek to do your will, grow in faith, and be attentive to the needs of others. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Christ our Lord, through the intercession of our Lady of Arabia. Amen. Saint Arithas and Companions, the Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.